Great. Well, hello again, everybody. And let's begin micro lesson 3.2. How do we support learners in a flexible course environment when we want them to engage? This one's going to be a shorter micro lesson, which is good because the last one, we want to save as much time as possible to complete. So we'll talk a little bit about using announcements, how we can motivate participation, how we can help students plan a little better, and how we can model or recommend specific tools that help students with interaction. And then um, again, as I brought up in the last micro lesson, students need strategies for engaging with class classmates when they might be at different times or in different places. Again, this may be something that they're not used to. And so we'll look at some different strategies and we'll complete an activity as always. So some of you may already have an announcement schedule. In my own class, I do three announcements a week. And I thought that that might be too much, but during the pandemic, students actually thanked me uh, for being regular and consistent with my announcements so that they would stay on track with what they needed to do. The pattern I follow is on Mondays because I have my modules begin and end on Mondays. So they overlap one full day. Um, but that way people who are already finished can start working on the new module. People who need a little more time can have that extra day that's not a weekend day to finish. But on Monday mornings, I send a kickoff message that outlines the, top, the topics that we're gonna cover. Um, I make connections to the outcomes and also any professional or personal uh, factors that are strong connections for the students. And I provide a schedule of what we're gonna do throughout the week. In the middle of the week, I call it the midweek motivation message, and I use it to encourage spaced study, remind students that they should be starting or should have already started some activity. And also, if you participated in that particular discussion, then go back and see if students replied to you. I call um, some of our discussions drive-by discussions or drive-through discussions, um, where students go through once, complete a transaction, and then never go back again. They've got what they think they need from it, but it's no longer a conversation. Uh, other ways you can manage that is by creating two deadlines, a deadline on Tuesday for an original post and Thursday for replies to other students. And that midweek motivation message is also a great way to increase um, students' interest by sharing some of the early cont contributions in the different um, participation mechanisms. So I'll pull out some great quotes from students who have already submitted a post uh, or an interesting reply or a shared resource. And last, the midweek motivation I often do as a video to humanize it, um, to make it more interesting. And I'll do a text version and a video version um, the text version just ends up being a script. And then on Fridays, I do what I call wrap up and reminder. And I summarize what happened that week. I let students know about the upcoming due dates the following Monday. And I let students who might be already finished to know what we're going to tackle the following week. So you all are going to have your own announcement schedules, but announcements are a key factor for flexible course environments to help students manage expectations, know what's coming up, uh, and especially catch up if something happened and they weren't able to participate as fully as they would have liked. Um, one day, you have lots of re-entry points, I like to say. So then, what are some other ways that we can motivate student engagement in a flexible course experience? Well, um, those of you who are fans of the COI or Community of Inquiry uh, framework, uh, the instructor having a presence, being in the course in multiple ways as a teacher, uh, as socially, uh, cognitively, um, how do we make sure that students know that we're there? Um, providing feedback, uh, making sure that we're helping students uh, think through what they're doing, and in some cases, maybe reaching out to students who have um, 
maybe disappeared or have just um, taken a break for whatever reason. So reaching out to them by email to make sure they know we're there to help them catch up. Another way to help students in these flexible course environments is to create examples or provide models from previous semesters that students can see what they should be producing. Uh, the work level goes up, especially when you um, provide models that are the highest caliber that you can find. Uh, and getting permission from previous students is always a good strategy. In my last slide, when I talked about the midweek motivation and calling out student work, that's a way to do a student spotlight. Another way to do that is if you're teaching a hybrid course where Tuesdays are in person and Thursdays are online, you can call out, hey, remember in the classroom, we heard from so-and-so, and that was a really good point. I wanna build on that here in the online space. Or if you're in the classroom, hey, I know um, we haven't seen each other for a week, but you guys have been really active in the discussion forum. I really love the threads that had to do with X, Y, and Z. So using those opportunities to make connections between the different environments and, and calling attention to specific contributions is a way not only to motivate those students who made the contributions, but others who may want to um, be called out in the future. And another social media strategy that we can use to motivate students is um, using the student mention strategy. Um, you may have seen in your reading through a discussion forum that 15 students out of 60, and maybe Lalita's class, if she's got 60 students, maybe 15 students have made a certain point, but the person at the end of the chain may not have read through all 60 students um, threads and may, may have missed some really cogent points. So you can put, hey, don't forget, check out Lalita's thread up above. It, she talks about something similar and you'll want to look at the link that she provided. And so those mentions are a way to um, connect students to each other if they have similar interests, if they have similar approaches to solving a problem, etc. In my own class, I have gamified it in certain ways. Um, I use levels, I use, um, I have students create a role that uh, aligns with their goal. Um, but I also create what I call the effort recognition board. And I don't put the number of points that students earn each module, but I do put the top point earners. Um, and I try to find different ones each time so that we're over time showing almost the entire class, um, some, some regulars who are just cranking out the work, but I like to make sure that we point out those students who are trying hard uh, this time and may not have been able to the time before. And then last but not least, using the progress tracking feature in the learning management system helps students know when they've completed activities and um, work their way through the course. Dennis, um, I use the effort recognition boards so that it's not necessarily a, a negative if you're not on it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not that you're a leader this week and not the next week. It's, it, I just changed the name so it'd be a little flatter hierarchy, but it's the same concept in gamification as a leaderboard. So earlier I mentioned we need to help students plan. And so uh, I looked to a few different common tools that we can use as examples for how to do that. Um, one is the cookbook strategy. In all of my uh, opening instructions for each module, I have a table that shows the learning outcome for that particular module, the activity students are gonna complete, and the amount of time it takes to complete that activity. And uh, I call this the cookbook strategy because a lot of cookbooks include the prep time and the cooking time um, for each dish. And so you can identify, hey, I've got guests coming over for dinner in 90 minutes. So I better not start this baked Alaska, which takes three hours. Um, 
even though it would be tasty. Uh, let's see. So you can probably also see that I've been doing that here in this institute at the beginning of each uh, module uh, or in the uh, in, in each micro lesson before you jump into the content. It says how much time it'll take to review the content and how much time it'll take to begin the activity. The calendar in the learning management system is uh, one tool that you can use that you can control. And that's, again, not only putting due dates, but also start dates, milestones for projects that might take a little bit longer so students can track progress over time and not wait until something's due to um, begin working on it. But you can also ask students to create a weekly calendar. And uh, again, in my class, at least for weeks one and two, I have students take pictures with their phone of their paper-based calendar or a screenshot of their computer or um, cell phone um, with their digital calendar to show that they have put at least five hours for this online class that I teach um, and that it's broken up into at least two or three chunks. Um, but that's, uh, again, training students to become more self-directed, helping them to plan ahead for the different aspects of a course, not just the part where they're sitting and listening to a lecture, but the part where they're completing activities, they need to plan out when they're going to do that as well. And Janae asks, when we're talking about calendar exercises, curious about how others have framed or encouraged a concept like flexible deadlines in the context of flexible course design. So before I answer that, since she put that call out to the entire group of 52 participants, I'm hopeful someone will step up to the challenge and answer. If not, I will jump in because I always have ideas. And if I don't, I make it up. All right, so the last tool that helps students plan is a to-do list. And uh, earlier in module one or two, I did describe how I use todoist.com. Um, which allows me for the low, low price of $29 a year to create a template of every activity in my class with a start date and a due date. And um, the thing that I like about Todoist is students can set it up to send them uh, reminders either to their email or uh, some other way uh, so that they get these uh, notes that tell them to start or finish an activity. So um, there you have it. We have some, yes, uh, Dennis does bring up, often students confuse the date with the date to do the assignment, right? So if we put start, middle, and end uh, all on the calendar, then students start thinking about spacing out their work. So for, for micro lesson 3.2, we are going to give you an opportunity to follow a couple different uh, strategies and they involve either an announcement schedule, an engagement motivation strategy, or a student engagement support mechanism. In the chat, I'm going to post the links to all three. If I can just get it from here. And then for those of you who might want to have your own copy, I'm gonna use the strategy from our friend, Troy Challenger in Monterey Bay. And I created separate links that you can click the, oh goodness, Janae, I will go fix that right away. For those of you who are on the, recording and wondering what I'm talking about. My colleagues in the chat have let me know that these documents are view only. 
which means no one can edit them. All right, first one's ready to go. Second one's ready to go. And here we go with number three. You would think with only four modules that it would be easy to keep track of all this, but no. <laughs> Having six documents for one activity can be a little mind boggling. All right, so I'm gonna give you all exactly three or four minutes to fill in some ideas in the collaborative sheet or to create your own copy and work on your own in the privacy of your office or space. And then we will return here to jump into micro lesson 3.3. All right, I see everybody's taking their time to think through what they want to type. Give everybody, let's say one more minute and then we will jump into our last session because in that check-in with yourself survey, everybody said they wanted to look at how to create a run of show document for managing a multimodal experience. And I can tell you, it's a fun activity and it takes a little thought. And as we close this micro lesson, we get a challenge taken by Joshua. He introduces flexible due dates by asking students to think about what they feel would be reasonable or equitable. They spend some time thinking about individually, they share ideas, pare it down, combine, and eventually get to a voting process. 
where the policy that gets the most votes is the one we go with. Students are often more restrictive than Joshua would be as an instructor. And they also acknowledge other people's situations and further enhance their understanding and connection with empathy. That's great. And as I mentioned in the module two, when we get talk about assessment, that the flexibility can have a drawback if you make it too flexible, where if students all can turn in any paper at the end of the semester and earn full credit, then you may end up with a flurry of what I call cluster completion, where students wait until the end when they have a little more time or a little more motivation and they turn everything in at once. And so uh, I have faced that demon before, but uh, for me with student athletes and others who need um, just space to be able to finish activities. In my mind, they have, if they have demonstrated that they met the learning outcomes, it doesn't have to happen on a specific day. All right, so I, I encourage anyone to share what they um, came up with for announcement schedules or engagement motivation strategies in the chat. Um, and I am going to stop the session and start it again so that we can finish our last macro lesson.